Welcome to Thursday Lines. I'm your host, Scoot, and I'm pumped. It's a big week of sport. It's uh, It's been nauseating listening to some of the AFL media, but uh, the show rolls on. MG, welcome back. Scooty, welcome back for you, mate. Two weeks in a row during uh, September. Very impressed. Don't want to blow my own trumpet, but declared the Blues. They absolutely fell in. And uh, for the, the savvy <laughs> listeners, if you listen closely, uh, the same game, Multi, was an absolute fill-up too. I... Uh, I was away last yes. Saturday night, and I woke up at 3 a.m. and I thought, oh, I'll just check my Top Sport account, and bang, there's, there's a 1000 bucks just sitting there. So that was uh, beautiful stuff from uh, the Brizzy Lions. And I tell you what, uh, speaking of 3 a.m., Top Rope Tedeschi, welcome. Hello, Nicholas. Hello, Mark. Jeez, <laughs> oh, tell you what, mate, uh, you're there in body, but uh, you look like you're running on fumes there, mate, and a uh, bit of a betting conference down in Melbourne, and I'm tipping uh, KFC or uh, Hungry Jacks. We'll get a bit of a workout uh, at the airport, or if not sooner, if you can find one open. But This was slow, I did the double. <laughs> Oh, we'll get straight into the AFL and we'll try and keep this one short and sweet. I know he's got a plane to catch Nick Tedeschi, so we'll zip through this week's show. Uh, Melbourne, they were terrible. Their tactics were just awful uh, against Collingwood. I thought the inside 50s and uh, just their whole strategy were cost them the game, MG. Yeah, along with uh, poor kicking again, Scoot. So nothing seems to change for Melbourne at this stage, um, or all season actually. They've you know they've had uh, at least four or five games where the uh, kicking has cost them uh, victory. It did again on uh, against Collingwood. If they kicked straight, they would have won. And also, yeah, as you said, inside 50. I don't know what tactic within the Melbourne coaching or passed on to the players that they think the long bomb, uh, you know, kicking 40 to 50 metres high into the forward line is going to get them victories, but it's not. Um, just hopefully that uh, a light's been shone on them enough this week that they will lower their eyes and uh, get the job done against uh, the Blues this week. Mm, look at absolute special this week, I would have thought, but uh, yeah, Collingwood and Brisbane straight through, so they're on top, and GWS were a, uh, a pretty impressive uh, performance on the weekend as well. So uh, that was another one we were sort of a bit keen on as well. Brendan Maynard, I think that just the whole situation with the Maynard hit, I think that's that that's everything I hate about AFL, and it's probably why I lean so heavily to horse racing. Just the noise and the way the administration run AFL is – it's just pathetic and it's sickening. And to be honest, oh, I'll be lucky to watch the games uh, this 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 weekend just in protest alone. I was I'm not a- sure that's 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 not true, Scoot. You'll watch the games for sure. And I, geez, I, let's not compare uh, administrations AFL to the racing either, because the racing's uh, you know egg on their face plenty of times, and they're not run well, especially in Victoria. I'll give you the tip, uh, the VRC and Racing Victoria. They got a lot to learn as well. But yeah. But, the AFL, total clickbait this, Scooty, from the start. Um, you know, it was almost like a uh, a war with NRL again um, with having their biting incident, which I'm sure Top Rope will love to discuss in a minute. But the Maynard thing was just, you know, I know they're backed into a corner of the AFL because of their concussion. They haven't done anything for the best part of, what, 10, 15, 20 years. They've got pending court cases, lawsuits, whatever coming up. So they can't just let this go, Scoot. But it's the way the media carry on about it. You know, it went on for four or five days. You know, one hand, they love banging on about mental health and all this for the players, yet they want to go after Maynard like he shot someone. Um, you know, this was an act of uh, a football act within the game done several times every weekend of the year. And unfortunately, Brayshaw got knocked out a result. But, you know, let's not hang the man for, uh, you know, playing the way that you're meant to play AFL football, which is, you know, going for the ball and also the man. And, I want to ask Scooty, what do you reckon would have happened if Brayshaw had looked up half a second earlier and defended himself with Maynard in midair and collected him in reverse, you know, like... 100%. It's it's just the outcome of it. Like, you know, would Brayshaw then have been suspended if if he he had um, protected himself and got Maynard on the way down? Oh, so, exactly the whole the whole thing it, and the way actually the way the Melbourne Footy Club and the Brayshaws have handled this it's just it's just ultra embarrassing. Like oh. the other thing I didn't like, Scooty, was the uh, you know why do we need to get the the father involved, the brother? You know when when, when does the fa- when when is it okay for the families to have uh, weigh in on these inf- you know incidents within well, the media? Well, if Top Rope picks on me, I'm going to get the old girl. I'm going to get the old girl on the phone and get her to start <laughs> defending me on this show. So it's it, it, it is like it, you, you nearly cheer for Melbourne to get knocked out of the finals, just the way they've sort of carried on. But uh, I thought Goodwin's performance was terrible. Uh, yeah, yeah, as you said, the brother, the mother, everyone sort of doubled down, and they all just look like absolute idiots. Maybe concussions contagious in the Brayshaw family because it sounds like they've all got a uh, a bit of a dose of it. Top Rope, tell you what. 
I was all over the uh, the Storm Broncos game, and much to uh, MG's disgust, there wasn't many points <laughs> early, but. Uh, Wow, what a what a game it was! Um, and my man Reese Walsh, she was absolutely superb. I guess the uh, the story out of the night somewhat was, I guess, the changing of the guard. Brisbane sort of they got the 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 new uh, faster foot fleet, but uh, pretty sad news for uh, my man and your man uh, Ryan Pappenhaus, and that was just diabolical. And uh, gee, it's as it's as it's as low and as a quiet as ever seen a stadium that was so up and about. You could hear a pin drop there. Yeah, it was. Uh, it was real sad. There was there was, there was some concern that. That after he kind of sustained that compound fracture, that he might never play again. Mm. Yeah, there, was a, there was an incident probably 10, 12 years ago, a good young player played for Australia called Gerard Yee, played for the Broncos, had a compound fracture in his ankle, just never played again. Like he, that was, that was a friend, he just couldn't, couldn't overcome it. So there was some, some, some big concern about, about that. The, the, the initial news after the surgery was that it's probably he might even play round one next year. So that's oh. much, much better news for, for, for kind of what everyone was thinking at the time. But look, he's played. 13 games in, you know, the year and a half. He's, yeah, it's, he's the most electric player in the comp. He's a fabulous ambassador for rugby league. And to see him go down, you know, I, I, there, are too, there aren't too many things rugby league fans go ground universally. Blowing Ryan Pappenhaus is one of them. So uh, it was very sad. Mm. My man Reese Walsh just doesn't have that the same uh, public appeal and charm. The, but I guess the way he sort of plays. But uh, the Panthers steamrolled the Warriors, who are starting to limp a little bit. There's a few sides that are having um, injury woes, and uh, probably uh, I don't know. We don't really have this segment, but two of the week, douche of the week, wanker of the week, whatever it is. Val Holmes just couldn't help himself with a uh, well, allegedly uh, looks like a bag of some sort of uh, yeah substance, but. Um, yeah, she's the stupidity of NRL players. It's been a while since we've seen the bubbler, but this is uh, right up there. And old Jack Byton, uh, he's got three weeks for uh, – Jack Whiten, sorry, uh, has cop three weeks. So Sous and uh, his little bum chum down there, Latrell Mitchell, will be uh, a bit sad to be without him. Yeah, uh, well, he'll probably – he might be able to justify it and say it was a good pick for Australia and uh, he might see those three games off uh, in October. So, uh, yeah, uh, it was a pretty disgraceful length for Jack Whiten's. Bit. What what I don't understand is there's pretty clear evidence that he bit the guy. He presented his arm, the pretty clear bite marks on there. Uh, obviously, you cannot get sent off the body anymore. Now, whether he did it or not, um, how you end up putting him on record, you get probably should have gone. So, anyway, it was um, another, you know, you talk about cats in the AFL. Where, like the the bloke who who, who, who who couldn't take the, the most minor of knocks and you play his whole family's <laughs> complaining. Well, but the, re- the lack of bottles from the referees when it comes to finals football, but that's 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 the issue. Like you see, you saw a couple of finals classics, two elimination games, and obviously, yeah, yeah one point game, two point game, field goals were were being fired everywhere. There wasn't one field goal where the defenders run. Well, I'm happy to call that during the regular season offside penalty. So it gets the finals, nothing. So, yeah, that, that to me is the real issue. So. Mm, happens all the time in AFL. So I guess fans are just sort of accustomed to it. But, uh, does, yeah, as you say, it doesn't really make it right. Let's uh, have a quick look at the AFL uh, final results. If you're under a rock last week, Collingwood uh, sick by seven points over the Ds. Carlton got the wobbles but uh, fell in against the Swans. GDOS were impressive, 101 to 77 against the Saints and 123 to uh, 75 uh, Port Adelaide. If you have a look at uh, the uh, the stats there, so 75% of the favourites have won and 50% covered. So. Uh, right on the money here, the total 50%, and then the home teams were 75 So no real big uh, surprises there. Skipping across to the NRL, Broncos 26 storm to nil the storm. Panthers uh, 32 to 6 Warriors, so both really dominant for performances there. And a couple of cliffhangers, the Rooster Sharks, and then again uh, the Knights and the Raiders was an absolute uh, corker and one of the first times in a long time that they've uh, stopped the uh, – the news down in Melbourne for the Rugby League, who just uh, was all the rage on that uh, Sunday night. So a couple of classic uh, matches there and uh, great watching on that uh, Sunday Arvo. So having a look at uh, the stats there, so four out of the four favourites won, so shot a bit straighter there and uh, 50% of the covers and then uh, low scoring tight contest looking at uh, the total uh, over under. Novak Djokovic, my man, Novak's he... Uh, 
was uh, electric uh, winning. They finally let him in the door at uh, the US Open, and then uh, Coco Goff was a, uh, a good winner of the women's. Interesting. Uh, she's a. I loved uh, what she said after the match. She said that uh, all my haters have been. Uh, well, trying to pour cold water on me, but uh, she used it as gas to sort of light her fire and uh, keep the uh, the engine roaring. So it's a funny one when uh, people come out that come out like that and really say that uh, it's backs against the wall stuff, and that inspires them to do better. Any of the haters and the knockers. So I always find that interesting when sports people uh, need that sort of or use that fuel as as sort of ammo, and it reminds me of the bloke that. Uh, on the uh, the British Open, he was uh, on the same sort of path. The Ricky Ponting lookalike was it Brian Harmon, top rope? Yep, Brian Harmon. Yeah, but no, no more no more questions about that notice, please. <laughs> he's at, I could see him in the background, <laughs> and he's very, very shaky. He's taking big, deep breaths in between in between my talking. This is great scenes. It's a Herculean effort, and I think the line of how many hours slept might be sort of three to four. So he's doing well to be absolutely uh, just upright and breathing. And I question whether he's got pants on at all. The magic of television. I wouldn't question it. Scott. <laughs> NFL uh, week two tomorrow. Uh, at the 10.15 a.m. game, it's uh, the Vikings uh, at Philly, and it's 136 Philly, 320 the Vikings, and six and a half the line here. Any lean top rope? Vikings are pretenders. Chips and Eagles. Oh, no, we won. Beautiful. Super Bowl, uh, Kansas City Chiefs were too strong, 750 there. They are at the moment. The 49ers are 750. Eagles, 850. The Bills and Cowboys share the same line at 11. The Bengals, uh, $13. Uh, not much movement here. The Dolphins, 16. Ravens are still a price if you like them. $17. Lions, 18. And then the Browns, 23. Make sure you uh, get on board with Top Sport. Little Birdie tells me that uh, Tristan was out and about last night. So a little shout out to Tristan if he's uh, catching this episode on the plane or his commute. Back to the Gold Coast. I'm tipping he'd be, uh, yeah, going home in a body bag or uh, sharing a cab and uh, helping uh, Top Rope get to the airport as well. The AFL Premiership market is starting to, uh, yeah, get really pointy. Collingwood are 240, Brisbane Lions are 310, Melbourne are 650, 950, Port Adelaide, Carlton $12, and GWS 14. Uh, you're all over it at the moment, MG. Many, any different thoughts to? To last week? No, nah, happy for uh, Brisbane to get their win. They were very impressive. I thought uh, last week they were the, probably the most impressive. So they're going to be hard to beat uh, facing either Melbourne or Carlton. I think they'll just have too much firepower for either. So uh, happy to get the uh, the ticket in there for the grand final. And uh, I think it's going to be hard for uh, someone to displace Collingwood. So I think the two favourites will, will now match off um, in, in the grand final. Um, if Probably the value is probably still the bottom line. The Giants can chance to knock off Port Adelaide this week, but uh, I don't think they can go any further, Scoot. All right, looking to get the Brownlow medal, probably no change here, but uh, it is amazing how many times Brownlow medal prices shift if a player comes out and plays well in a final, but uh, no real danger of that. Nick Dacos, 275, Bontempelli, 295, Butters, 530, Petrarca, 650, and uh, Lockie Neal, $11. So I still think it's a two-horse race, according to MG last week, Dacos and Bontempelli. So I guess that'll fire up shortly, given uh, it's only sort of a week it also away. Make sure uh, you check out uh, MG's uh, tip package, the uh, the stings. We've started to uh, spear it off to uh, so any sort of old existing customers. There's a little bit of a free scoop this week, so make sure you get around uh, the tips. Last week was uh, pretty good, two wins and one loss, and so we bet uh, seven and a half units and then uh, showed a little profit there of 1.9 units, so running at uh, 25%, and the season total is 3.22% winning 11 units for the year. Panthers looking at the NRL prices, uh, $2.10, Broncos $2.50, Storm $11, Warriors $15, Roosters $21, Knights $21. Panthers to lose uh, and the Br Brisbane Broncos, I assume that they'll both get through. If you had to price up the uh, the gr NRL grand final, I know it's a question without notice, uh, Nick Tedeschi, but... Uh, God, how sh the Broncos look rock bottom odds there at $2.50. How, how short can they be against the Panthers in the Grand Final? Totally. So we are going to this discussion yesterday with a, few, with a few guys, and the general consensus was that the law one would be Penrith favoured by five and a half, six and a half points. Mm. So that, like, there's no way that Penrith are not day with it in that market. Like, yes, they've, 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 they've lobbed on the hard side of the draw. They're probably going to hot Melbourne. But Melbourne haven't played Penrith particularly well this year. 
and you know you think that they're that yeah parents should start very very short and they double digit favorites so yeah oh, I, I don't i don't see how Brisbane are so close to parents in the market I would, uh, yeah, I'd, I'd think bookies would be desperate to get uh, the Broncos in at the $2.50 and uh, they'll get much, much better in the grand final if they uh, so happen to make it through. Top rope, uh, small little loss on uh, week one. You were sort of chips in storm, so we went two from two. You bet nine and a half units, so you uh, you were down 1.98 units, losing 20%. <clears throat> And it's been a tricky year for you. Let's uh, get into the action for the first AFL match on Friday night, and this is the D's versus Carlton, uh, seven fifty at the MCG, dollar uh, sixty five now. The D's, I think they bet about a dollar seventy one or seventy two. Line seven and a half, and Carlton at two twenty five. Total one fifty six and a half. Chips in at Melbourne Demons. I'm saying MG. What about you? Yeah, I agree with you, Scoot. Yeah, pretty. Uh... Pretty keen to back Melbourne. Well, we have back Melbourne. Uh, went out uh, early price at the six and a half. I don't think it'll move a great deal. Um, but I think they're pretty exposed with the teams of who's in and out. I just think the uh, the bounce back factor, the top four sides, we've kind of stayed at most of the year. Definitely on the back end of the year, they're just. I think they're uh, a step up from the bottom four. Uh, Carlton can't pot their form. They've won ten out of their last eleven, so there's no pot, and they do get Melbourne in a neutral venue, so. Advantage uh, in Carlton in that thing, but uh, you know Melbourne at the MCG, they're eleven and three this year. They lost close to Collingwood last week, and if they kick straight, would have won the game. So um, by no means was it a bad loss, and they should have probably had the week off this week. So yeah, I'm pretty keen on uh, pretty keen on Melbourne, and uh, just monitoring the total at this stage. Uh, Scoot, uh, the weather obviously down in Melbourne, so uh, we've hit a bit of a, a purple patch every day. Seems to be around that twenty three to twenty five, so it's going to be perfect weather over the weekend. These two teams have got a very low history, and even though the totals come out one fifty five, it's just gone up to one fifty six. I just think, uh, you know, the unders are eleven and three between these two teams in a matchup twice this year. They've played, and the totals been one hundred and five and one hundred and sixteen. So I just think the way both forward lines are functioning and how good both defences are, uh, I, I think we might be stepping into the under total at some stage before this game kicks off, Scoot, because I just can't see too much offence. So I think it'll be a lot like the Collingwood. Melbourne score line of last week, and it'll be low and pretty ugly. And if Melbourne kicks straight, they'll get the job done. Oh, can't wait to uh, watch this one then. Uh, <clears throat> what a Carlton! What a Carlton need to do to win the win the match? Well, and upset them. I guess mentally they need to free themselves. Well, <clears throat> maybe they've got the you know the the finals win under the belt, and they uh, they go maybe yeah. they play a more attacking game to try and get Melbourne to kick a score against them, which they've sort of struggled to put really big scores on. Yeah, I don't think they're capable of it, Scoot. I just think that, uh, you know, the way Carlton have been built, it's on their defence. Uh, they kind of flood back. Their wingers flood back. Uh, they contest the ball, so they, they like it in close. I just think it's it's kind of like normally you can pinpoint the midfield or, or one aspect of the game where it'll be won or loss. I really think this game's all three sections. I think it's how Melbourne go inside their forward 50 is going to be key for them kicking goals. Uh, Carlton have now gone to be one out with Kerno, so May and Lever can really concentrate on on shutting down that. And I don't think they've got too many other options to goal. And the midfields are obviously going to be very key, even though Melbourne have lost Brayshaw. I think Martin's a huge loss for Carlton in his defensive actions. But, yeah, I, th- I think all three facets of the game now have important elements to it. Um, and I think it, I think for Melbourne, it'll really come down to their kicking. Carlton, they may get freed up, no pressure, but I think that just their fans now expect the win um, and they'll probably have the edge in the crowd. So that might spur them on, Scoop. But, yeah, I, I just can't see this being an open free-scoring game. Contain or double-team uh, Kerno and it's uh, all over it, over for uh, Carlton. Yeah, I think that Melbourne will be too strong and, yeah, they just shot themselves in the foot last week. So expecting a big, big uh, spirited bounce back from them. All right, so they're nearly uh, best of the week, I would have thought. Looking at the NRL Storm versus Roosters, uh, also at 7.50. So I may be watching this as part of my protest. Storm are a uh, pretty short favourite here, dollar twenty-five, and uh, $4 for the Chooks, uh, Nikki's Chooks, and 11 and a half the line. Bit of movement here. Well, it's all one way, isn't it, Top Bro? Everyone's uh, chips in Melbourne Storm on the bounce back. Yeah, it's an absolute one goal this week. Uh, the, the teams uh, from the top four who, who lose week one have a great record uh, week two of the finals, uh, particularly those off a pretty heavy loss. I think those off uh, losing by 12 or more have covered uh, 12 of the last 19. Storm have a great record against the Chooks. They've won seven of the last eight. They've been both times this year, been both time very well. And 
if you're tossing up a little bit, you just have to have one look at the, the rooster street quarter line. No Manu, there's no two, uh, there's no Swali. The, the three quarter line is Jackson, Paulo, Virginia, Paulo, Corey Allen, Paul Morosky. That is the worst three quarter line ever played a final. It is absolutely horrendous. They will not get a run. There are teams deserve by those four. So, uh, yeah, you've got to be on, you've got to be on this line's most from eight and a half to 11 and a half or start more than 12. Just jump on the stall. Still got a still got a bit of venom, still got a bit of fight. He might be on fumes, but I tell you what, there was uh, a fair bit of uh, gas in that little uh, tor- torch for poor old Nicky's chooks. Take it out of me, that's good. Just take it out of me. That was on a couple of deep breaths here, so far off to the AFL. Expect a, a text message from uh, Nicky. Nicky be sunbaking uh, at San Arini and she'll just be uh, firing one in saying, damn you, top row with my chookies. Uh, the second match in the AFL is Port Adelaide versus GWS Giants. They're a different side at home, Port Adelaide, $1.64, 8 and a half, 225 the uh, Giants, and then 175 and a half here, 725 Adelaide Oval. The crowd will be absolutely feral. MG? <laughs> yeah, I agree. <laughs> agree with those points there, Scoot. They will be packed house at Adelaide Oval and make a good point there. At Port Adelaide are 10 and 3 at home this year, so they defend their own turf well. Giants have played there three times this year because they had the uh, the uh, gather round there. So they're, they're two out of three at Adelaide Oval and they have won at 11 di- different venues this year. So uh, they're, they're going to hold no fears going into Adelaide. But, yeah, it's going to be a pretty uh, fired up crowd, I would have thought. And Port Adelaide need to uh, bounce back after a very poor performance after halftime against Brisbane. They got smashed. So uh, if they've got any bottle about them, they'll come out firing as well. But, yeah, I, I can make a case equally for both sides here. The market shifted slightly to GWS, which you would want to do in a, uh, you know, take the start in a 50-50. Uh, GWS have won um, 10 of their last 12, Scoot, and they're on fire. Um, you know, they've won three straight coming into this. A bit like Carlton, they'll be free rowing as well. They're chock full of confidence. And they do have the game style to uh, knock off Port. They can match them in all areas. I think they've got a better back line than Port Adelaide's forward line. There's some huge queries over Marshall, whether Dixon comes in fresh. I think GWS won't mind if Dixon comes up first up after a long layoff. Um, I just think Port Adelaide may be just running out of a bit of bit of fuel. Um, they rely heavily on their young midfield. Um, you know, they'll need a sharp this week, but uh, the GWS have got uh, some strong bodies in the midfield. Coniglio will come back with uh, with Kelly and Green's just a freak. So I think with their defense and stuff, I think GWS are a live chance for sure. Um, and unlike the Melbourne Carlton game, I think this will be a really high scoring game, Scoot. I think uh, we, we, we decided to bet the over at 173.5. It's gone up slightly two points to 175.5. I think it'll only go one way. Probably won't move too much more, but. Perfect weather in Adelaide. Um, uh, Giants' last five straight games have gone over and Port Adelaide are 15 and 9 for the over for the year. So I expect there'll be plenty of points in this game and GWS are a live chance. Tell you what, Ken Hinckley, uh, the, the only thing that I can be certain of is if Port loses, the Ken Hinckley haters will be absolutely savage on They've Twitter. already signed him, Scoot. They've I know. already signed him. Yeah, they were just coming out saying this is the biggest mistake. Ken's a fraud, even though he can't put on a jumper and go out there and play himself. But... Uh, you've nearly talked me into the draw. I might spec the draw at 40 or 51 there, MG. This could be an absolute bloodbath. And I used to love a little bit of a uh, the, the quarter by quarter draw at any other quarter at $11. So that's my little sneaky pickle bet <laughs> oh, this shit. week in the uh, Port Giants game. They might beat the absolute crap out of each other and uh, the scores might be locked at uh, one of the terms or we might just go for the Bundy big play 50s and then we'll reinvest all their money at uh, the Art Gallery down in Melbourne next time we, uh, we catch up. Top rope, you still yeah. with us? Yeah, I'm still here. <laughs> I'm still here. NRL, uh, the second match of the week is the Warriors versus Knights at Go Media Stadium over in New Zealand. Uh, $1.50 for the Warriors, two forty eight. Newcastle Knights, five and a half and forty one and a half. Best way to make money in this one? Yeah, not, uh, Warriors first first time final in I think uh, seventeen years. Been a long, long time to trade rents uh, for New Zealand. Everybody in New Zealand got Wars fever. Up into that, right? I'm not sure that's that's a great thing for them right now. Oh, they haven't covered any of their last seven. They've got some expectation on now. It's, it's studying that well, the second week final is Newcastle against the New Zealand Warriors. Like seriously, not when he would have had that at the start of the year. Uh, oh, I think there's a bit of value about Newcastle. Here. Oh, oh, they've won, you know, a, a silly round Australia against Town and Trot now. Uh, yeah, they were a little disappointing. They didn't put Canberra the sword last week. 
you know, a bit like I'm thinking about the Warriors, just spoke to Big Hunt for a few distractions, but you saw this. They got a good record against them. You can't slug over the Warriors. Sean Johnson was out last week. A report's how he's gone 100%. He probably will play, but he, yeah, he, he's a long way from his best. Oh, I think a plus four and a half is a good bet. Mm, now plus five and a half at 185. Take that. Yeah, well, absolutely. Let's jump all over it. Mm, maybe a little bit of flair for Scooty too. Um, just had a boredom, probably Bradman best, a little bit of two score a try, anytime try scorer at $3.30. Well, I think you'd also have the greatest same game multi. They must have lobbed in about 20 of 24 games this year. Dominic Young, Greg Marzio, both can score a try. It'll be about 250, 260. Just get on. Bang. Beautiful business. All right. Short. It's sweet, and uh, hopefully we found you guys a, yeah, a couple of Morales or a couple of teams to avoid. It's going to be uh, a cracking uh, run into the finals with the prelims after this week. I'm not sure if uh, Nikki's going to wrestle the uh, the host seat back off me, but uh, we'll see how she gets through the uh, Italy trip, and hopefully she gets better or gets through it better than uh, Top Rope got through the uh, the betting conference uh, last night. So a big thanks to uh, our supporters, uh, Top Sport and Punning Form and the Comics Lounge. Big thanks to uh, Nick Tedeschi for uh, managing to extricate himself out of his uh, bed and uh, into the uh, the hot seat there. And uh, good luck on the flight back to Orange. I'm tipping it's not a direct one. You are tipping correctly, and I'll win for a hell of a day. Oh, MG, good luck on the weekend, and uh, enjoy the rest of the day hangover free, and uh, fingers crossed we can uh, get the chocolates. Yeah, thanks, Goody. Enjoy uh, picking off uh, all the bookies on the women's AFL stuff as well. All right, that's a wrap from us, and uh, we've got it done in uh, record time. We'll see you next week.